Well, hello again, and thanks for tuning in as we take just a few minutes to explore another vintage twin shock race machine in my continuing series of World of Classic Dirt Bikes. Now this time round we're going to take a brief browse at a bike that is uh, maybe not so well known around the motocross racetracks these days but uh, nevertheless let's take a look at David Ray's 1981 LR410 Kramer. Now when it comes to these Kramer motorcycles there is not a lot of information about these bikes that is uh, freely available although the background of the Kramer motorcycle company is a bit of an enigma and certainly a very brief one as they only produced a few of these machines in a very short period but nevertheless in its very brief history the Kramer motorcycles brand was actually established by Fritz Kramer whose father ran a motorcycle business in Laubus Esbach in Germany where the family were very active in the motocross and enduro scene during the 1970s and 80s. Now the company raced and sold DKW motorcycles and then eventually teamed up with the German Michael manufacturer from which their very successful motorcycles then became known as Kramer Michaels. But in 1977 they began producing these Kramer machines powered of course by these very reliable Rotax motors. Now this of course made the bikes very successful although most of them were sold in France where they had a very enthusiastic importer on their books at the time. Now Peter Huser, who was an importer and distributor, purchased what was left of the original German Kramer company and attempted to re-establish the mark in the 1980s, with of course disastrous results because after the purchase he then faced financial ruin and unfortunately <laughs> committed suicide. Although despite that uh, very tragic news, uh, our featured machine is of course a 1981 LR410 bike with of course that uh, mega reliable uh, two-stroke Rotax motor. Now virtually all of these uh, Kramer machines were powered by these uh, Austrian two-stroke uh, Rotax machines and uh, these featured power plants were of course used to power many other off-road motorcycles during the 1980s era with uh, SWM and uh, Can-Am to name uh, just two. Now of course these uh, two-stroke Rotax engines were very reliable motors and gave very good service if maintained correctly and uh, were serviced regularly. Now the Kramer tubular steel frames were equally strong and very light and it was uh, quite easy to throw this bike around on the track and of course was very flickable if you wanted to make uh, tight turns in a race situation. Now although this uh, particular engine is badged as a Kramer engine, uh, it is still just a two-stroke Rotax uh, motor with a Kramer uh, badge on the side. Now of course these Kramer machines are twin-shock bikes with a pair of conventional rear suspension units tucked up under the rear of the seat. Although at first glance this bike does look like it's a more modern monoshock machine as these uh, suspension units are not easily seen from uh, a distance away. And it's certainly not the first time that uh, club scrutineers have initially disallowed these bikes to race thinking initially that they were just a more modern type of machine with a single suspension unit at the rear. Now as you can see this 81 machine had a very substantial rear chain 
final drive tensioner and chain guide system that was uh, indeed very strong and did its job extremely well. And of course this uh, chain tensioner and chain guide system was of course a standard fitment on these uh, 1981 uh, 410 Kramers. Now of course all these side panels and uh, mud guards are of course uh, plastic items. Now of course the fuel tank also is made from plastic as many other motocross manufacturers at the time were also using plastic fuel cells on their machines. Now this 1981 bike was also fitted with one of the most comfortable racing seats of its time and certainly helped the rider immensely if the bike was ever used on a bumpy and rough racetrack. Now of course the badge on the side panel says it all, uh, made in Germany. Now the front forks and their associated uh, brake hubs are of course Maiko units, although I'm not entirely sure if these were an original fitment uh, from 1981, although this of course could be an original factory fitment when you consider that Kramer did team up with Maiko in the late uh, 1970s. Now the Rotax uh, motors did use a substantial amount of magnesium in the construction with the left and right uh, engine casings of course made from uh, magnesium. Now these Kramer machines are not the most popular bikes around the paddocks of vintage and twin shop race events and that's not really because they weren't any good. That's certainly not, it's just that very few of them were actually made and even fewer survive into this decade of 2019. But mind you, personally speaking, I had a friend who owned a 250 version of this bike and the bike took him to many a race win and even a few championship titles into the bargain. And he had nothing but praise for these Kramer machines. And although he doesn't race the bike on a regular basis now, he still has that particular bike in his collection. Now although this is a short and very brief look at what I think is a decent and almost original machine from 1981, it's still good to see that there are still one or two of these bikes still upholding the name of what once was a good off-road racing machine from that 1981 period. So anyhow, that's uh, David Ray's rare and almost original example of a forgotten 1981 Kramer LR410 machine. Right, so we've had a very brief look at the bike, so basically all that is left is to get her fired up and just listen to what she sounds like. This video was brought to you in association with Worldsport, the world's number one supplier for all your off-road and leisure sportswear. Just visit their online website 
for more details.